What do you think is Colin's greatest attribute? Uh, some might call Colin's greatest attribute stubbornness. I call it determination. I would agree with that and also expand that I think his greatest attribute in my eyes is uh, his determination and problem solving. So Colin is also legally blind on top of the challenges that um, you know encompass the Angelman syndrome diagnosis. And to watch him figure out how to navigate our house and how to feed himself and you know work on getting dressed and access his communication device when his world really exists in this seven foot bubble, um, it's it's really it's a really cool thing to see. It's pretty inspiring. Um, he doesn't ever give up when he's motivated, and I think that to me is his greatest attribute. I would say Orion's greatest attribute is that he's a hard worker. I think Olivia would grow up to be either a speaker or an influencer of some sort because people are so drawn to her. It is if she didn't get like snagged up into modeling first because she's so beautiful. <laughs> if Quinn did not have Angelman syndrome and the challenges that it um, represents. I think that she, her fierceness, um, I think that she could be a lawyer because she's fierce and stubborn and opinionated. Um, and yeah, she's still very young, so this is a hard question for me, but I think that she could be an attorney. That or like an actress, because she's very dramatic as well. <laughs> so what is Angelman Syndrome? Angelman Syndrome is, it's a rare genetic disorder. It happens in very few children. Um, and it's basically due to the loss of just a little bit of genetic material on one chromosome that affects one single gene that produces a single protein expressed in the brain. And that's it. Gene therapy is what Agilis is focused on. And really in gene therapy, we're trying to replace the gene that's not working correctly. So uh, the way we do it is with AAV technology. It's essentially a virus. So we take a virus and we put a correct copy of the gene inside the virus. Then we give the virus to the patient the virus infects the cells, releases the correct gene, and then it functions again. When we decided to get into Angelman syndrome therapeutic development, we had looked at some work that was done by Dr. Ed Weber at the University of South Florida in gene therapy. Agilis is a gene therapy company. We did an evaluation with that work. Um, during that time, we reached out, we asked Dr. Weber, who are some of the organizations and who should we talk to? And he introduced us to FAST. Uh, I had a conversation with Paula Evans, uh, many of the other parents, and immediately knew that this group was highly motivated and would do everything they could to help us move that therapeutic forward. Uh, one, we're trying to understand how and why the UB3A gene is, is regulated the way it is in the brain. Uh, so what uh, function does turning off the copy that we inherit from the father serve? Uh, why did uh, why did this happen? Uh, we're also trying to understand how the uh, father's copy is turned off. Um, there's a basic science question there just to simply understand the mechanism by which it occurs, but we're particularly interested in that because we hope to find ways to circumvent that process as a therapy for Angelman syndrome. Since the, the copy from the mother is mutated, um, and not the copy from the father. Uh, it's a perfectly, perfectly functional copy of the gene, but it's off. So if we can find some way to turn it back on, we may uh, be able to mitigate some of the symptoms that are associated with the condition or perhaps cure it altogether. Uh, I was studying ways to uh, turn genes on and turn genes off. In Angelman syndrome, the disease is caused by the loss of, of a particular gene uh, that's called UBE3A, and that gene is turned off. So I'm trying to use the tool that I know how to build to turn that gene back on. The most exciting aspect of my research is that it's really moving in a direction towards a clinical trial soon. 
Madeline would be a teacher. She's kind, energetic, full of personality. She has made a difference in my life and I see her making a difference in others. If Mason didn't have the challenges that AS poses, he would be a speech language pathologist. Um, I think that he would be an advocate for those that don't have a voice um, because he knows exactly how it feels to not be able to express his thoughts. Well, now that the cure is coming soon, uh, the possibilities are endless. This is something that we never really thought about because we didn't know that his future could hold something that great. So we think Hendrick would be a great engineer. He likes tinkering with toys and manipulating things with his hands. And we think that would be a perfect fit for him. I think uh, this is kind of a tough question. It's not something that I've really let myself think about since diagnosis. Um, but I think it would have to do, it would have to be something that to deal with music. He loves creating different sounds and he has all these light up, you know, musical toys and he'll line them up and he'll activate them in different patterns and he'll go, you know, from one to the other and he loves the sounds and the music that he creates. So I think it would, he would be in the music industry. If Logan didn't have the challenges that he had because of AS, I think he'd grow up to be a... <laughs> Musician. Musician. We're getting past the point of doing research for scientific discovery. And, and I think that the foundation realizes that we have the goal. We know what to do. There are three ways that you can come up with treatments for this disorder. You can either turn on the paternal gene and reactivate it. Uh, you can do gene therapy or protein therapy. Or you can come up with therapeutics to overcome the absence of that particular gene. But right now, we're, we're clear on what we need to do and how we need to do it. With the support of the Angelman community, FAST has been able to develop multiple gene therapy strategies to treat Angelman syndrome. We have the technology to replace the missing maternal gene as well as the protein that it creates and to activate the normal silent paternal gene. We are confident that with further support, we can have at least two of these gene therapy strategies in human clinical trials and be on course to finally have a treatment for this devastating disorder in 2019. I mean, what can you say about that? The thought of a cure on the horizon makes me think of one thing, and that's that it's life-changing. Right, I think it's going to change the future for all of us. And that would be a huge answer to prayer. That would be exciting. <laughs> that would be awe-inspiring. Um, that would be legendary.